St. Paul's Secret, Perfect Joy. In today's second reading from the letter to the Philippians, St. Paul refers to a secret. He says this, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. And as the result of a secret that if he's hungry or if he's well-fed, if he has a lot of possessions or if he doesn't, he still is happy and peaceful. He still shows forth the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, mildness, and, and self-control, whether or not he's wealthy or in need. So what is St. Paul's secret? St. Paul's secret is his relationship, his true relationship with Jesus Christ. For St. Paul, what is most important in his life is love of God and love and brother and sisters. He demonstrates his true love for Jesus Christ by loving his brothers and sisters in true ways. And if he loses everything else that is secondary, possessions, food, that doesn't just cause him to lose his peace because he sees it and he recognizes it as secondary to what is primary in his life, love of God and love of neighbor. St. Francis tells us a story through Brother Leo that illustrates this secret of St. Paul. And St. Francis calls it perfect joy, perfect joy. And as a lesson to Brother Leo on perfect joy, St. Francis tells Brother Leo to imagine, imagine, Brother Leo, that we arrive in the night while it's raining a lot and we're cold. We arrive before the door of our monastery. We knock on our door, hoping, expecting to be let in, and a brother comes out. That brother does not recognize us and tells us, I will not let you in. You are imposters. You are not St. Francis. You're not Brother Leo. You stay outside the whole night. You will not come in and slams the door shut. St. Francis and then Brother Leo spend the night outside in that coldness, shivering as it rains upon them. And as morning breaks, they once again gingerly knock on the door and the same brother comes out. And this time, he sees you are both here still, and he takes a cudgel, and he beats them, and he swears at them, and tells them to leave. St. Francis tells Brother Leo, if we are peaceful, patient, and retain our joy, that is perfect joy. That is perfect joy. And what is the secret? The secret is the same thing that St. Paul is talking about. As long as... For St. Francis and Brother Leo, as long as what is most primary, most important in their life is love of God and love of neighbor, love of Jesus Christ, then everything else is secondary. The rain, sleeping outside, even being sworn out, sworn at because they're considered imposters and they're not actually themselves according to another person's perception. All that is secondary. What is primary is Jesus Christ love of Jesus Christ, love of God, and love of neighbor. And when that becomes more and more central in our lives, then we also will share in that secret of St. Paul and also of St. Francis, because we're living and we're becoming more and more in accordance with that perfect joy, that perfect joy of seeing what is primary in our life and what is secondary. And what ought to be primary in our life is love of God and love of neighbor. All else is secondary. However, if we examine our lives, if I examine my life, I find out that often what is secondary is seems very primary in my life. For example, last week I briefly lost my cell phone. And I quickly realized I'm far away from perfect joy. I became anxious, I became upset, I was dialing a number on another phone, trying to find it, and it was too much. I mean, a little anxiety, okay, that's understandable. But to be overly upset about the loss of a little gadget, that said something to me, and perhaps it might say something to you. It also reminded me that I came born into this world naked without a cell phone, and I also returned to my Creator our Creator, our Heavenly Father, naked, naked as I was born, without a cell phone. Why should it cause me lack of peace because I can't find it? May we, 
examine our lives and see what are those gadgets, what are maybe even people that I prioritize in some way as more important than love of God and love of neighbor. And if so, bring that before the Lord and ask the Lord to heal us. Ask the Lord to grow, that we may grow in holy detachment. And when we do so, interestingly, we will begin to enjoy life more, not less. Holy detachment helps us to enjoy life more, not less. Because when we're enjoying the good things of this world, whether it's a cell phone or whether it's a flower that one day will wilt and die, we don't become, it's not tinged, that, that joy is not tinged and shaped by the fear of losing it. Because we will lose it. We accept that. So may we ask God for the grace of holy detachment so that we can enjoy with the great freedom of the children of God all the created realities of this world has to offer, but always knowing that someday it will be taken away from us and we will come back to our Creator just as naked as we were born. Lord Jesus, may we grow in perfect joy so that we remain joyful and peaceful when we are hungry or when we are eating, and when we have lots of possessions, and when we have almost nothing. Grant us the grace to believe that the secret to peace and joy is enjoying the goods of this world, but in a way that we do not become overly attached to them. For one day, they will be taken away from us when Sister Death takes us by the hand and leads us to our Heavenly Creator. God bless. Thank you.